So this talk summarizes briefly a new piece of science published in Nature which summarizes a new approach to global sustainability which we call planetary boundaries. Planetary boundaries comes out of a realization that humanity today is the main driver of change at the Earth system scale. We have entered a new geological era, the Anthropocene, in the words of the Nobel Prize laureate Paul Crutzen. The Anthropocene originates from the fact that we're starting to see evidence that on virtually every key indicator of welfare for humanity from ecosystems and processes in the Earth system, we see an accelerated pressure from humanity, all the way from deforestation, loss of biodiversity, overfishing, etc., etc. We're hitting hardwired processes at the global level. Now the question then is, what does this mean for development and what does it mean for the way we address um, sustainability? This question has a very strong relevance to resilience as well, because we are therefore fiddling with the capacity of the Earth system to regulate itself, to take disturbances and stay in a desired domain. We have defined the Holocene, the last 10,000 years of human history, as the stable, desired state within which humanity wants to stay and has stayed during the whole period that has supported civilizations as we know it today. It's remarkable to see over just the past 100,000 years how parameters which are fundamental for development have been swaying up and down in a tremendous way until a point just at the start of the Holocene when these parameters have stayed very stable. So we take the Holocene as the desired state and with a resilience perspective then analyzing the risk that we come over thresholds and the risk that we fall into undesired states outside of this Holocene stable domain. To explore the risks of pushing ourselves out of the Holocene, we invited 25 or so leading international global chain scientists to explore which are the Earth system processes that we have to be stewards of to stay within this desired Holocene state, to avoid that we tip over unacceptable, potentially disastrous thresholds for humanity. These scientists came from all strata, from oceanographers, climatologists, ecologists, land use, hydrologists, and they went in a quest for these processes. And these processes then summarizes the planetary boundaries. Theoretically, it is a very simple concept. It basically originates from the realization from science that, in fact, our pressures on ecosystems and the response of ecosystems is often nonlinear. That if you, for example, have a variable here on carbon dioxide, with increasing concentration of carbon dioxide, how does a glacier react? Well, it may react in a very limited way for a long time until it reaches a trigger point where it crosses a threshold. That is the threshold point which we don't want to push the whole planet to. A planetary boundary is the safe level beyond which you don't want to transgress to avoid coming close to that threshold. We've put this boundary level at the lower edge of the uncertainty zone around the threshold because thresholds are very difficult to identify. The point below this boundary is the safe space for humanity. So that's the definition and we went on a quest and we didn't end up with one boundary but on the other hand, surprisingly, we didn't end up with 25. These scientists propose that so far there are only nine identifiable processes in the Earth system that have clear risk of causing disastrous or unacceptable large threshold effects if we cross beyond safe boundaries. Now, which are these nine? Well, not surprisingly, climate change is one of them. Climate change, potentially the one discussed most today in the policy debate. Climate change, we then use the latest science based on the UN IPCC all the way to the latest science coming up with a threshold which we believe should be in the order of 350 ppm carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere or equivalent to one watt per square meter of warming. I won't go through the quantifications of each one of them but it's just to show that for climate change, a clear definable risk of crossing disastrous thresholds with nonlinear dynamics in a number of systems such as sea level rise, accelerated melting of glaciers, 
destruction of rainy seasons, etc. And defining quantitatively a lower safe boundary beyond which you don't want to move. So the stratospheric ozone layer, a second one, which is quite easily defined and one that has been treated quite well in the Montreal Protocol. Ocean acidification, so oceans being one, very closely linked to climate, and there we took the risk of having an acidification process that leads to collapse of marine, um, marine fauna and, and uh, marine life as the indicator, and there again it's possible to quantify, we believe, a parameter surrounded by the aragonite saturation ratio in the oceans. And these then all being, so let's say, closer to the atmosphere and, and ocean, large ocean ecosystems. Freshwater use as one planetary boundary, which at a global level is starting to come to a point where it may interfere with the ability of particularly terrestrial ecosystems, to sustain biomass to the extent that it can contribute to regulate climate. We took here the consumptive water use at the global level as one of the thresholds. Land use as another one, and here again a very close link to climate, to biological diversity, to the capacity of the Earth system to take perturbations. Biological diversity and loss of biodiversity which may surprise many, but it's been coming increasingly clear that biological diversity is, has a function of regulating ecosystems, not only to be a preservation of species. The large nitrogen and phosphorus cycles, the interference with, with these cycles, and then two parameters that we weren't able to quantify, namely chemical pollution and finally aerosol loading. The interesting thing with these boundaries, not surprising, is that they interact with each other and we believe that as long as humanity stays within the safe boundaries of these, we have the possibility to thrive and develop within the safe operating space of the boundaries. We estimate, even though very tentatively, that we may have transgressed three of these boundaries. The one on nitrogen, loss of biological diversity and climate, that we are in a danger zone on these three. Now these are very tentative estimates, there are enormous uncertainties still, it's a proposition for science going forward. We have proposed quantifications of seven, but not the aerosol and chemical pollution boundary, but it suggests a new way of approaching development at the global level because it allows ourselves to move away from limits to growth, to move away from the sense of just reducing negative impacts to define the safe space for humanity as a guiding principle for policy and for governance into the future. They do interact not only in a bilateral way, but certainly in a dynamic way. And we believe that once these interactions are better understood, it may actually be that the safe operating space, in, in fact, is slightly smaller than that would may be appearing in the work we've done. So much science um, is still required, but this is one first way of trying to define what are the preconditions for humanity to stay within the desired Holocene state and avoid that we tip over thresholds into an undesired Anthropocene state, which for the first time then addresses resilience at the global level.